Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued three royal decrees, 26, 27 and 28 of 2018. Decree 26 stipulates the renewal of the appointment of Hussam Ahmed Khalif al Asfar as Deputy Secretary General of the Ombudsman's Office and the Ministry of Interior with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary for a period of five years. Decree 27 stipulates the appointment of Ahmed Mohammed Abdul Karim Al Manai as Director General of Bahrain News Agency, the BNA, and the Ministry of Information Affairs with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. Decree 28 stipulates the appointment of Assistant Undersecretaries at the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs, and Urban Planning. Sheikh Michal bin Mohammed Al Khalifa as Assistant Undersecretary for Construction and Maintenance Projects while Nas Mohammed Al Mubarak as Assistant Undersecretary for Joint Municipal Services and Mohammed Said Mohammed Hilal Ashali as Assistant Undersecretary for Resources and Information. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met today at Gdebia Palace, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Royal Highnesses affirmed keenness to enhance cooperation with various countries, especially in the field of economics and investment. They affirmed that all agreements signed with other countries should enhance the strategic vision of the Kingdom, especially in the commercial sector. The Royal Highnesses then discussed recent regional and international developments and affirmed that the region is keen on speeding up its development process and continue its march of progress in order to maintain security and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today at Debia Palace the weekly cabinet meeting. He directed to establish two new standards for the Khalifa bin Salman Press Award to expand it on a regional level by reorganising the classification of categories entitled to apply for the award to include Gulf and Arab newspapers published in Arabic and English. His Royal Highness also expressed thanks to the affiliates of the award and congratulated the winners. Then His Royal Highness directed to put tight controls on communications towers and rectify the violating towers. He also directed to employ international companies to evaluate the radiation levels of the towers and assess their health and environmental impacts, as well as construct new towers according to international standards. He also directed to conduct periodic inspections, 
appointing the Urban Planning Authority to locate all communication towers. The Premier also directed the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and the Telecommunication Regulation Authority to develop a plan concerning this issue. His Royal Highness noted the importance of monitoring investment projects to maintain the privacy of villages and residential areas and study their social impact on the residents by creating regulations for the height and locations of investment projects. The Prime Minister affirmed the importance of field visits to evaluate the level of services, directing to follow up on the visit of the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to HID and create a timeline for the implementation of the projects in the area. To alleviate the living expenses of low-income Bahraini families during Ramadan, His Royal Highness directed to double the social allowance to 15,000 BD for 500 families. He also directed to double the disability allowance for 11,000 people. He directed the Ministry of Labour and Social Development to take the necessary measures to implement the decision. In light of Bahrain's keenness to affirm its full commitment to transparency in the field of taxation and its international cooperation in this regard, and to ensure that international companies do not evade the payment of their taxes, the Cabinet approved Bahrain's accession to the Comprehensive Framework to counter tax-based erosion and the transfer of profits. The Cabinet instructed the Ministry of Finance to apply to the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development on behalf of the Bahraini Government. The Cabinet also appointed the concerned authorities to implement the requirements of the project to counter tax-based erosion and to take the necessary technical and legal measures. The Cabinet approved an agreement and a two memorandums of understanding between the Bahrain and India on exemption from visa requirements for diplomatic and private passport holders and an MOU on the cooperation in the field of education and an MOU between the Bahrain Supreme Council for the Environment and India's Ministry for the Environment and Forests and Climate Change. The Cabinet approved a cooperation agreement between the National Authority and Regulation of Occupations and Health Services and the Saudi Commission for Health Specialities for cooperation between the two parties in the field of licences for practising health professionals, procedures and examinations. The Cabinet discussed the addition of a new article to the labour law in the private sector which prohibits discrimination based on sex, origin, language, religion or creed between workers subject to its provisions. The Cabinet discussed three proposals on courses in sports psychology for national trainers, training and employment of people with special needs and on special room fees at King Hamad University Hospital. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa launched today the first artificial intelligence competition in the Middle East under the theme Innovate for the Future organised by Bahrain Polytechnic and Microsoft in partnership with His Highness's media office. The event comes within the initiatives of His Highness Sheikh Khalid to support the scientific sector in which the owner of the best project will qualify for the finals that will be held in the United States next July. Upon arrival, His Highness was received by the Under Secretary of Education Ministry, Dr Mohammed Mubarak Juma, Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees at Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr Mohammed Al Asiri. Member of the Board of Trustees, Sheikh Maram bint Isa Al Khalifa, Regional Manager of Microsoft, Sheikh Saif Al Husseini, CEO of Tamkin, Ibrahim Jinahi, and a number of officials. His Highness Sheikh Khalid stressed the need to cope with the development of the world, which requires to come up with innovative projects that will contribute to the development of societies. He added that this initiative comes under the directors of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to support students in this field and create a generation ta able to build for the society. His Highness praised the efforts of the Polytechnic and Microsoft for organising the event and wished them success. He honoured the sponsors and the winners of the championship. His Highness then toured the exhibition which included the winning team's projects and then planted a tree to commemorate this occasion.
And now joining us in the studio is Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr. Jeff Zabuski. Hello, Dr. Jeff Zabuski. Hello, hello, thanks for having me. And welcome me. to the news. Thank you. Could you tell us about the goals of this competition supported by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, please? Yes, I certainly will. And I, I, I just first want to say that we were very pleased with the, the generosity and the graciousness of uh, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad uh, Al Khalifa for his willingness to be our patron. And it was uh, uh, wonderful for our students to uh, have interaction with him as they demonstrated their, their creativity. But to your question, I know I speak for the chairman of our board, uh, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, when I say that our focus and opportunity here is to unleash the creativity of students across Bahrain. And when you put students together with new technology and give them opportunities to think out of the box and come up with new ideas, it's extraordinary with what they come up with. And that's what we saw today, the incredible creativity of uh, young people who were thinking about artificial intelligence and using new tools to help improve people's lives. Uh, a, a particular app that helped people with visual disabilities uh, using AI technology. Another app that allowed you to think and make things change unbelievably in, in, your, in your household. Turn on the lights, uh, turn on the air conditioning, just through uh, a device that was attached to an individual's head. So these are the kinds of fresh thinking, out of the box ideas that will ultimately translate into new economic opportunities, new commercialization and business opportunities. And we're starting young. We're starting with students from high schools, students from the university and from uh, Bahrain Polytechnic, and getting them thinking about the future and how these new technologies are going to be deployed uh, to improve the economy and to improve people's lives. And in your opinion, what do you think these um, events can contribute to the future of the Kingdom of Bahrain? I think the focus really the opportunity is around diversifying the economy. Um, new technologies are becoming much more accessible uh, to young people. Uh, Microsoft's technology that we featured uh, today is something that allows virtually anyone to start to develop these new apps and new ideas. And so when you start to unleash this type of creativity and these type of stu uh, uh, tools and put it in the hands of young people, you can't help but think new ideas are going to be established that ultimately could lead to new jobs, to new kinds of businesses, to new opportunities. So I, I think it's never too early to start to think about how do we uh, create new clusters of economic activity and be on the leading edge right here in Bahrain uh, and get to the market before others uh, because uh, it's coming. It's an, it's an onslaught of, of new technology and artificial intelligence um, will be used in many uh, sectors. In the banking sector, uh, it'll be uh, around creating smart cities. We all know about autonomous vehicles. That's all dependent on artificial intelligence. And so I know that the ideas that our students have um, will be things we couldn't even fathom today. Uh, in the years to come, they'll be thinking of new ways to use these tools uh, to create new business opportunities and to help evolve and uh, diversify the economy. The Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr. Jeff Zabuski, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Deputised by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa attended the change of Central Command Ceremony to the US Navy that was held in Jaffer. The Vice Admiral Scott Sterney took over as outgoing commander of the US Naval Forces Central Command and commander of the 5th Fleet Vice Admiral, succeeding Vice Admiral John C. Aquilino, whose t term has ended. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid conveyed the greetings and congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to Vice Admiral Sterney upon assuming his new position and his wishes of success. They also convey the gratitude of His Royal Highness to Vice Admiral Aquilino for his efforts to bolster cooperation between the two countries, especially in the military and defence fields. They also hear the development of the Bahraini-US relations in all fields. Vice Admiral Sterney praised the historic relations between the two countries and expressed thanks and appreciation for Bahrain's support and efforts to maintain peace and stability in the region.
The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Matawa, received today a delegation from the Sustainable Development Administration at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Indesa, led by Saris Jagwant, in the presence of the Acting Executive Deputy President for Statistics and Population Register, Dr Nabil Mohammed bin Shams, the Resident Representative of the UNDP and UN Resident Coordinator, Amin Al Shagawi in the framework of the delegation's visit to the Kingdom to coordinate and discuss the preparation of the first national voluntary report in the Kingdom to implement the goal of Sustainable Development 2030. The Minister affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom to bolster cooperation and the relations with the UN organisations and its specialised agencies in the framework of strategic partnership between Bahrain and the UN 2018 to 2022. He noted that Bahrain attaches great importance to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. He also hailed the technical support and cooperation of the UN to the preparation and presentation of the National Voluntary Report, affirming that its preparation has progressed rapidly as a result of the government's authorities' efforts. For her part, the President of Endesa expressed pleasure in visiting Bahrain and aspirations for meeting the officials and working with the concerned technical team in preparing the report. The resident representative of UNDP commended the Kingdom's role in preparing the report and its requirements. He noted that the UN is keen on applying the goals of sustainable development in its developmental projects. Under the patronage of the Interior Minister, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Chief of Public Security, Major General Tariq Al Hassan, attended today the graduation ceremony of the 16th batch of newly recruited police officers that included 451 officers. The graduates received police and legal sciences certificates at the Police Training Institute in accordance with a plan of education and training studied within a framework of a training programme that took six months. Upon arrival, Chief of Public Security was received by the Commander of the Royal Police Academy and a number of general managers. The ceremony began with the anthem of the Major General. The graduates then delivered a performance of their practical skills that showed the competence, discipline, outstanding performance and the readiness to perform their duties. Chief of Public Security affirmed the directives of the Interior Minister to update the programmes and curricula and to continue to develop them and work to obtain international recognition from the competent authorities and prepare the cadres of the Ministry of Interior in accordance with the latest international standards in scientific and training fields. He hailed the development strategy launched by the Ministry of Interior, which aims to improve the security work and prepare the security personnel to deal with various events with high readiness and accuracy in performance, in addition to providing the best services to citizens and residents. He praised the advanced level reached by the Royal Police Academy and its continued efforts to maintaining peace and security. The commander of the Police Training Institute stressed that the directors of the Minister of Interior had his keenness to promote the results of training in various fields, and the follow-up of the Chief of Public Security have had the effect of creating security cadres with functional competence capable of meeting all security challenges and keeping pace with changes. He added that this batch were prepared in accordance with the planned training plans and are comparable with the requirements of the variables of contemporary security in a manner that ensures them to withstand the pressures of work surrounding the security men. After the graduates took the oath, Chief of Public Security handed them the certificates and congratulated them on this occasion. He urged them to exert all the efforts in order to serve the Kingdom and maintain its security and stability under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa.